And we're going to kick off with the uh, front page of the Irish Independent sports section here. This is, for me, one of the uh, photographs across the entire day, Shane Lowry there. It's, when you look at the, it's actually quite a typical, in a lot of ways, Shane Lowry photograph is the one thing that strikes me, and it's probably something he needs to have a chat with himself about, but the exasperation on his face and his body language, like I'm sure any sports psychologist would be saying, Shane, Shane, Shane. It kind of makes him what he is, though, like you, you, you kind of... Like, he hasn't followed up any of his wins with any sort of great line of form, but he scraped into the Masters, and you're thinking, well, he's now scraped into it. But it was such a big deal. Like, when he won in Abu Dhabi back in January, he was already talking about what that's going to mean for him mm. going to the Masters. So you can imagine he's had four months of a lead-in, and then to go out and shoot the score he did yesterday. Like, he's... Bar in America, like, he's out of the golf tournament, mm. you know? So. Yeah, and he's kind of accepting of that as well, which is, like, he's... he's and this is why people love him, but he's so... Not Rory McIlroy in yeah. so many ways. <laughs> uh, frustrated McIlroy admits to making uh, too many mistakes is uh, the other line there from Vincent Hogan of the Irish Independent. And GA rules out the use of TMO technology in championship, writes Colin Keyes here. And we are coming back to that story in just a few minutes' time. The uh, front page of the Irish Examiner sports section. Meanwhile, the bogeyman and a picture of Rory McIlroy here in action at the Masters yesterday. Rory struggles for consistency at Augusta as a uh, tiger on a roll. And the uh, splash across the top there as well. Single-minded, it's clear where GA would stand on Irish Unity Poll, says the GA president, uh, John Horne. That's in the Irish Examiner. I think you've got the Daily Mail there, Conor. Kind of yeah, the Daily Mail lead with Easy Tiger. Woods rolls back the years with a first round 70. And um, I think a lot of the Irish newspaper golf coverage is coloured by the fact that <laughs> They probably went to print prior to, yes, yeah. uh, and, and, and all the guys up the top of the leaderboard were actually quite laid out, because um, Brooks Kepka shooting 600 par is a very, very significant development for the first round of a, if it was, a, if it was another golfer, you'd think, well, you know, you're under pressure, but yeah. this guy doesn't have nerves, so yeah. he could actually pull away. And the off-lead from Philip Quinn is football family lose patience with the FAI. Um, this is more follow-up to yesterday's story of the, the PFI, PFAI issuing a very strong statement about John Delaney and the governance of the FAI. The uh, sports front page of the Irish Daily Star, Blues, Salah, Race, Shame. This is the story that a bunch of Chelsea supporters uh, following their Europa League game were um, involved in a racist chant uh, in the direction of Mo Salah and it's being condemned obviously by the various sporting bodies and we'll see what action uh, is taken there. It obviously wasn't in the sporting field to play but in a pub uh, after the Europa League game at Prague so um, we'll see what action is taken out of that and Tiger right in the hunt as you say. Uh, Connor, a lot of those headlines slightly out of date almost in terms of everything that's going on. Yeah, I suppose the Tiger one is just incredibly interesting because he, he he hit, I think, 10 of the first 11 fairways yesterday. And you're thinking, like, if this fella drives the ball straight all week, he's going to win. Mm. Uh, and the first fairway he missed was on the 10th, and, and uh, he managed to make a birdie from the, from, from the end of the bushes. So he, he, he made for great television yesterday. He always does, yeah. um, but particularly yesterday. Um, the Mirror's back page is the same Mo Salah story. Vile, Chelsea fans in Prague labelled a disgrace after being filmed and seeing Salah as a bomber. Um, the top of the page is Tiger Rose. It's a reference to the Tiger Woods story. And on the right, PFA hit out at New Low for a local game. And um, this is the, the very strong PFAI statement yesterday. Again. It's a team that's also picked up on the Irish Sun this morning. Rotten. PFA, uh, FAI blast Delaney and Co. This is on Kauser writing here uh, following that statement from the PFAI yesterday. Uh, also, that uh, racism storm reflected upon here by Andrew Dillon and uh, Arsenal's 2 0 win over Napoli. You now foot in semis in the sun. And the Irish Times leads with golf, um, predictably enough for Philip Quinn in Augusta, uh, or uh, sorry, Philip Reid. Woods, Woods back in familiar territory um, and tough finish caps a day of more ups and downs. Philip Reid making the point that in no other golf course in the world is um, experience and knowledge of the course so beneficial as Augusta and um, nobody is as experienced in Augusta as Tiger Woods. Yeah, let's we'll see if he can craft his way around it over the weekend. Sponsors up FAI pressure, the Times Ireland edition uh, rides here. This is again that ongoing story that Connor mentioned a few moments ago. Shot of uh, mixed day for McElroy um, is the uh, main photograph there on the back page as well. Uh, Kane looks set to miss run in, writes Gary Jacob. This is the injury. Uh, that they've managed to get a mention of World Cup in 1966 into the uh, opening paragraph of <laughs> Harry Kane has suffered a serious ankle injury that could scupper his hopes of captaining England to their first trophy since the World Cup in 1966. <laughs> Never miss an opportunity, as Declan Lynch would say, to discuss the uh, World Cup in 66 uh, and Falao's World Cup in doubt. Quite generous headline, I would suggest, that I think his entire career is in doubt by all accounts following his uh, homophobic outburst during the week. 
Uh, and just the racing post here leads with Let the Good Times Roll. Foxes are flying under Rogers. This is the I probably escaped under the radar with the with the hysteria about the title run in, but the fact that Brendan Rogers has led Leicester to four wins in succession of five of the last six ahead of their um, Premier League game with Newcastle tonight. Yeah, still have to remind myself that he's uh, actually the Leicester manager. <laughs> and uh, the Herald, meanwhile, time for change. This is again for the reflections on the various statements that have come out yesterday. Richard Dunn's thoughts as well, and Aidan Fitzmaurice with some considered thoughts on the committee hearing during the week. So some uh, FAI top brass there on the way uh, into or out of the Oireachtas committee during the week. That's the Herald, and one last one for you as well. The uh, Irish News Sports section here. GEA stance on Border Paul. Uh, pretty clear, admit Horn is uh, the main story there as well. Some of the uh, golf. And it was a story that we wanted to uh, pick up on from uh, John Horn on a United Ireland. It's on uh, the inside of the Examiner Sports section today. Uh, so this really is on the back of. Uh, the statements from Jarlett Burns and from Joe Brawley as well in the last few weeks saying that the GA would need to back uh, a poll, as it's uh, described, not quite a vote, but there seems like there might be some sort of a border poll in relation to whether uh, Irish unity could be a thing or not. Uh, Joe Brawley talks about it happening maybe at some point in the next decade. Uh, so, yeah, in relation to United Ireland, if or when I suppose it was to happen. Um, so John Horan is commenting on it here. The... Uh, main hook around the story is a quote from him. He was at a launch of a club uh, in Derry yesterday in, in Limavady. We look upon ourselves as a 32-county organisation, uh, says John Horan, so I think it's pretty clear where the GA would stand if such a poll came, i.e. they would be in support of a 32-county Ireland. Um, how that would manifest itself, I'm not sure. And whether the GA, I suppose, Connor, have a role to play in politics. It's, a, it's an interesting one, and it's the point I think that Joe Brawley has been making repeatedly in the last few weeks, and Gerald Burns as well, that not only should the GA be leaning towards a, you know, a united Ireland, if that is the question being asked in any referendum, they should be actively campaigning for it, or they should be at least publicly um, backing uh, such a move. It's an interesting one because in the past, the GA have run a mile from taking any major political stance. If you remember the marriage equality referendum, um, I think David Goff, who was refereeing at Crow Park, was refused to wear maybe a, a rainbow wristband or... Yeah, it was laces or something. Yeah, it was one or the other anyway, yeah. And, and like the, the stance that the GA took during that, which is an absolutely perfectly acceptable stance, was that we are an apolitical organisation. We are a sporting and cultural organisation. We do not take stances on political mm. issues. And you can't say that a referendum on... on uh, Whatever the referendum is, um, is not a political issue. I, I, I understand completely what John Horan is saying. Like from, from an organisation that has an All-Ireland Senior Football Championship, an All-Ireland Hurling Championship, where there's so much movement around the border, it would be hugely impractical um, for, for a hard border or any sort of division to, mm. or further division to come up. But to say that you're, uh, to say, like it's, an in, it, it's just an interesting one from John Horan. Yeah, because it, uh, I mean, regardless of Brexit, uh, United Ireland is in so many ways just an entirely separate conversation. Well, well, it's a token. I think there are a lot of people on the island that would love so, an organisation like the GAA to take a leadership role. You know, to to say, well, look, if this is the question being asked, um, this is the way we would like to think it goes. But I, I don't know whether that kind of takes for granted what an awful lot of the membership. I heard Declan Bogan here speaking to, to Shane Stapleton um, a few weeks ago and he made the point like, you know, what does the, what does the, you know, 21, 22 year old Herder and Kula think of this? What does, you know... I think it's a fantastic question and, and the, I, we're operating on an assumption that the vast majority of the GA membership would want a United Ireland, but whether whether that's an actual thing or not, we don't know. And obviously, the uh, constitution or the at least the ethos of the GA was set up with and a, a all Ireland, uh, a thirty two county Ireland in mind. But like at the same time, what was relevant when the GA was set up, or relevant or appropriate when the GA was set up, may not and most likely is not appropriate or relevant now. I think Charlotte Bourne's quoted a line in the initial constitution of the GAA which alluded to the fact that it was a 32 county um, organisation and, and something to do with furthering the cause of you know, unification but it, like it's a little bit like the the American and the Second Amendment, you know, the mm. right to bear arms. A lot has happened since that was yeah. written. You know, it is not, it, like, there's so much context and there are so, much, so many layers of um, 
you know, there's a lot of time has passed basically and there are a lot of people on the island that don't have very strong views on this and a lot of them will be members of the GAA and I think for anybody at the GAA to maybe assume to speak, I'm not saying that John Horan is now for a second, but um, I think it, 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 it would be It'd be quite a bold move, I think, for this. Well, I, I think he is. I, I think it's difficult to be absolutely fair to him. It's difficult to read that statement. We look upon ourselves as a 32-county organisation, so I think it's pretty clear where the yeah, GEA would stand if such a poll came. Yeah, that's pretty unequivocal, I think, from John Horan, you know. And it's an interesting move. It's quite bold because I think you're, you know, I suppose the GEA is to any individual to the people that they surround themselves with, you know. So there are people in the GA that would say, yes, of course, everybody in the GA wants a United Ireland mm. because they are the GA members with whom they come into the most frequent contact. But the, I, I would imagine that there's a, a very v big body of people in the GA who um, wouldn't necessarily ascribe to that view. No, and it raises all sorts of questions about, like, you know, if there was... How would you, how would you even begin to poll the entirety of the GA community? <laughs> like, well... Let's talk about democracy. Um, so, I mean, I think that's a fascinating question. And, like, what's the majority that's required to decide that the GEA can suddenly be a voice uh, for politics in Ireland? And let's say, you know, is that two-thirds majority? So we're sort of actively deciding that we're going to alienate 30% of our membership because we've decided this is something we, we want to get behind. And so it raises is, all sorts of questions. The other thing as well is that, like, is that the GA's function now? You know, like, yeah. it, like, t like John, I'm sure, was asked the question, I think he was speaking in Derry, um, and he was asked the question, like, what would, and, and I presume he's speaking on behalf of the GA leadership and maybe even in a personal capacity there. Um, but when it comes down to it, if there was a, if there was a vote, whether the GA would be an active campaigner in that, that's, that's probably another level yeah. again that, that I don't think that John is maybe, I don't think that's what he is suggesting there because um, look, is it the GAA's function to campaign or to be a, a kind of a political, a political vehicle? Is it an unfair equivalency that if we were sitting here discussing that the FA, FA the Football Asso Association of England, were getting involved in the conversation around Brexit, if they were siding with yeah. re Remain or Leave, it feels to me it's kind of in the same sort of space. It probably is, it probably is, but there are, uh, yeah... There are historical uh, angles to this conversation mm. too. I think there's a presumption among people who aren't in the GAA that the GAA will be leading yeah, this way sure. politically too. Well, this would be uh, a fantastic opportunity for them to go, look, we've said before, we're not a political organisation and that's, we're going to stand by that. And if you're a member of the GAA that believes in a 32... Uh, County Ireland, we're with you. And if you're a member of the GEA that believes that it should just stay the way it is, we're with you. And if you don't give a shite, we're with you as well. Yeah. Like, surely that's... They, it, we talk about inclusivity and it's a theme that comes up across a, a whole bunch of uh, topics today. Surely that's the way to do it. Yeah. But I, uh, similarly, you know, the GEA could take a very um, neutral stance on the marriage equality... Well, no stance whatsoever on the marriage equality referendum mm. be because um, I don't think it's the sort of political issue that was going to mobilise a lot of members. Like, they're not going to go to mm. Central Council and pe people sit around and say, lads, why didn't we take a very hardline stance on this? Be mm. Because I'm not sure how many people would have been that engaged in it at mm. the top level. But I think there is a significant body of people um, within the kind of higher echelons of the GEA that would like the GEA. And th this is kind of the point. This is... Like, I don't think the GEA is sitting on their hands and deciding they've no decision to make is an option now because they they at least have to decide whether they are going to be active about this mm. or inactive, and mm. that in itself is kind of taking a stance. Well, it, look, as you said, if nothing else, that comment this morning is going to uh, kick off more discussions like this. I'm absolutely certain of that, and I'm absolutely certain that the next time he's in front of the media or there's some uh, somebody of significance from the GA in front of the media, this is a topic that's going to yeah. come up open up again, and I'm sure at some point or another, as you say, they are going to have to come up with some sort of an official stance on it. So I suppose watch this space is the thing. Something completely different. If you pass me over the uh, t uh, the Irish Times, there kind of something totally different and just one thing that we wanted to give a mention to here it's the a lot of the papers have done the kind of Augusta diary obviously of the various little bits and pieces that have uh, gone in no Kerry jerseys have made any of these diaries by the way which is <laughs> absolutely outrageous Kenny gets hands on silverware was the main thing that jumped out at me here and Kenny is in Augusta I mean sure like me course, why wouldn't yeah, be yeah, yeah, sort of former t -shirt. Um, Kenny did the honours in his role as global ambassador for the philanthropic organisation ISPS Handa an organisation I have to say I know absolutely nothing about uh, in presenting Brooks Kepka with his Players Player of the Year award at the Golf Riders Association of America annual prize giving this is the most unlikely pairing I think that if you were to sit here and say <laughs> you know two unlikely people Brooks Kepka who leads the Masters 
uh, joint leader of the Masters after day one, and our own Enda Kenny have been um, in close proximity this week. A visit to Augusta, writes Philip Reid, is old hat for the golfing politician who first visited the Masters back in 1995 in his capacity as Minister for Sport. <laughs> I would imagine that would be the least remarkable part of Brooks Koepka's week. <laughs> we might leave that one there. Uh, the, we mentioned at the uh, top of the segment here in the, from the newspapers, GA rules out use of TMO technology in championship uh, from Colm Keyes. Uh, in the Irish Independent today, and it's just a, it's a fascinating one. Uh, calls for the GA to explore the use of television match official for intercounty games have been knocked back by Central Council. And the key line here, uh, they were both considered impractical. Uh, these are the suggestions from uh, a club in Leitrim and a club in Clare. Uh, impractical at present because of cost issues outweighing any benefits accrued. Yeah, I think there's a utilisation issue too. Like, uh, like a, what, what is the scope for, for TMO? Like, what, yes. do, what do you decide on? Is it every foul? Is it every free? Gaelic football, we kind of accept the, the terms in which Gaelic football uh, are played. But like, mm. the, the, in an inter-county Gaelic football match, there are endless number of frees that go unspotted. Like, there's, there's, nearly, there's nearly kind of a a pressure gauge on a referee for how severe a free is before they before they give it. Like so like what are you going to do? Are you going to stop an all Ireland final with ten seconds to go to see how many players were dragged down on the kick out? Like yeah. so I think it's a utilization thing. I think the score detection technology probably has another level to go. Um, you know, the, like the team or the the, the Hawkeye. The, the Hawkeye, you know, with VAR where you can actually see where the ball yeah. crossed the line. That goal that Waterford um, were circle punched with last year in yeah. the Martin Hurland Championship. But my understanding is that this new slitter that the GA want to bring in that has a, a chip inside it for authenticity purposes and to basically regularise the slitter, that, that actually what they can do is kind of create a magnetic field around the goal um, and you can, you can score detect um, right. whether a goal has been scored in hurling. You can tell very, very quickly. Right. Um, because the problem with Hawkeye is that in hurling, it's not 100% accurate, I still don't think. Um, and in anywhere other than Crow Park, even in Thurless, it, it's, it takes too long, it kind of kills the momentum of the game, and you don't have the taw or nail, so you're kind of waiting on the referee to put their hand right. up. So I don't think it's the perfect thing, but like if you have score detection technology in a wider uh, number of grounds, I think that's probably as far as the GA can take can take technology yeah. when it comes to refereeing. Might be back to that previous conversation we were having about um, the technology is there, it's going to cost a bit, and it's while it works, while VAR, I mean, in my humble opinion, is an absolute success in, in football, and um, it's not, never going to clear everything up 100%, but like has definitely advanced the correct calls versus the wrong calls. Even if you see a goal scored in Gaelic football, and you say, well, hang on, ref, that was eight steps. Yeah, Every yeah, goal yeah, is eight true, steps. Yeah. You know? but, like when but, you're about yeah. to pull the trigger in Gaelic football, the referee will give you two extra steps. They, that, they that's do, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. They do. T I mean, everybody accepts it's legit. Yeah. They do talk about sort of incidences and scores, so there is a possibility that at that point the referee gets to review it and go, actually, hang on, eight steps, no goal, yeah. free out. Do you, you do it for a point? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I, it's a good point. It's a good. I mean, you'd be there. The game would last. You'd be looking at American football. Yeah, I, um, I think of all the things, like for all the problems that there are with uh, refereeing and, and the accuracy issues around score detection, I think the last thing that Gaelic football needs to be at the moment is more stop start. Mm -hmm. All right. Keep your comments coming in to us uh, on the hashtag OTBAM or on our Facebook, YouTube feed, and uh, we'd love to uh, hear from you. We'll bring you those comments over the course of the morning. It is uh, just gone a quarter past eight on this Friday morning on OTBAM. Up next, we're going to talk uh, Liverpool against Chelsea this weekend with Gareth Roberts of the Anfield Rap.